Good morning, folks. Welcome back. We are in day five of no rain. Middle of August and at long last, the sun is out. It's been an awful year. The rain just kept on and on. And if we did have a sunny day, it was like one day, maybe two at the most. And then back to overcast or raining. So my job, well, jobs for today. I've got some seeds to do. I've got some shaping of young trees to do. And I've got a foliar spray to do. We had a... Um, Lip analysis on the trees and quite interesting like everything was spot on apart from iron now your soil is based on what can be termed as your parent plant what the original rock was when the land was formed and a lot of Australia they will often referred to as a red center and what have you. There's a lot of iron in big areas of uh, Australian soil. And we've got iron in our soil as well. Not as high as other areas, but still we've got iron. But it, it isn't easily taken up by your plants or your trees. So although all my... Um, background micronutrients are okay it's still lacking a bit in terms of iron and iron is just part of the jigsaw it helps with um, photosynthesis etc so that's a poly spray that I've got to do this afternoon some tree shaping this branch is getting a little bit too upright so Want to take this out got that to do on about 40 young trees and removing some of this young growth clear these off same with this one this one's a bit fuller these branches are not a bad angle at all need to take off all this side stuff that branch there, which is the dominant branch at the moment, does need to be pulled over a little bit. The reason there's so much of this sidewood is because at the moment we're grafting. So it's just easier to harvest from these low branches here than it is sort of taking off a big tree there. So we've got... Um these old silo boxes here, seeds out of a fruit yesterday, we let them soak overnight. We tend to, I suppose what you would term, mass plant, because we find it seems to encourage the germination. So just press them down slightly into the soil. And then every day, at least once a day, because it's quite dry at the moment, we will just spray water to keep everything nice and moist. We, we seem to find that um, burying the seed in the wet soil, they rot quite easily. Oh, here we've got one already germinated the warmer the more humid it is the quicker the germination is if the if what's coming up looks to be weak thin and weak then we'll just throw that away so these are old fencing posts cut this in half
got holes in here so drive these into the ground and then use sting to um, manipulate the branches to the angle that we want so first thing on this tree is to remove <coughs> a lot of these secondary branches eventually when it's fully formed there won't be any um, secondary branches in the first metre and a half or so of the fully grown tree because you need the airflow and the light in there this branch here is going to be directly under that one so get rid of that if one grows on this side we'll let that develop but for the time being it'll just be uh, three main leaders our prevailing wind is from the southeast but because of the mountain range we have what are referred to as as um, Katabada winds so they come tumbling down off the mountain range behind us which is to the east so for this particular paddock the reality is that our prevailing winds come from the east which means that these westerly branches get blown and rather than having to be pulled down we generally have to tie them to hold them up whereas these that are the towards the east these are the ones that we have to pull down and these which are to the north the angles okay but they tend to get blown in this angle so we have to tie them to hold them back towards the east as you can see here we've already tied earlier um, might be able to just move this up the leader to do that job while the growth is young it's a very very thin bark and is easily damaged a hard string would damage that so we'll use soft ties at first until it's hardened up and then if need be we'll use string but we'll rather than tying straight to it we'll do a big loop because you've got to be careful a small loop and as it grows and grows it will it will actually cut into the wood so we've got an example here and that direction there is west and this tree has been blown that way and the one over there is lying more flat so that one is actually going to have to be lifted up so that the apical dominance is more vertical and let it get carried away and then and then this branch here is going to have to be pulled this way and then that branch there is going to have to be pulled down because that wants to be vertical oh well that's the before let's see if i can get it to look something like decent after so nicely opened up this branch don't try and do too much in one go i don't like to do that because risk of breaking so this first and then maybe in four weeks or so i'll do the next one up like i, said, I don't if you go too high up and it's soft wood you can actually bend the leader and it yeah you end up with a wonky leader this one after removing all the side shoots it lifted up anyway so just tied that to the other branch just to hold it like that tying this branch the bark's a lot thicker it's a lot older wood it'll be too strong for the soft ties the soft ties will break so take a bit of this string tie a loop 
But like, like I say, I leave a large loop so that it doesn't strangle the branch. So this fencing post, I would say every 70, 100 mils, it's got a hole. Now, if I tie up here, there's more leverage to pull the um, post over. So I will generally go low down. I've got quite a strong branch. Tie onto the loop first. Don't try and over pull in one big go because you can literally just rip the branch off the main trunk. Not going to pull it any harder just yet. If I do need to pull it more, I'll leave it four to five weeks to let this settle and then I'll come back and give another pull. Like I say, kind of do it all in one go. You can actually break the branch and yeah, that's just going to set you back a. Eh? So this is an example of what I'm talking about in that the angle of this branch is fine, but can you see how it's veering up in that direction? That's because the wind is pushing it that way. So as we've got it held down at the right angle, but I need to pull it that way somewhat. So I've got a soft tie here. Don't go... I don't like to go too high up where it's soft because you can physically, that could end up staying like that, but this soft would just bend over. So we stay on the firmer sort of brown plant material, soft tie there, and then just slowly, slowly pull it back to where we want it. If in your area you don't get these strong winds then this is probably something that you don't have to won't have to think about so another tree here um young growth coming through that we will get rid of want to leave enough foliage to help help to um actually drive the tree. This probably is the one that needs pulling down. So a piece of this soft tie here. Again, a reasonably large loop so that the branch doesn't outgrow the loop and it bite in. And believe me, it's um, surprising how quickly that can happen. And we, if we can, really do like to keep on top of this because the shape of the tree that we develop now is a shape of the tree that will be there for a long, long time. The orchard, you would hope, is going to be here for a few decades, which is why in other videos we pointed out that the certainly the wooden trellising posts are not viable because they'll be rotten before the trees have lived their life. If you're going to provide support, the sport's got to last as long as the, the tree, the orchard. Well, that's another job done. Go and get lunch. Then got a little bit more drafting to do this afternoon on the young trees. And then it's uh, fully spraying.
Okay, so off we go. Five o'clock now, so the heat's gone out of the sun. Take me maybe an hour to get all this done. And then uh, I'll cut for the day. Beautiful, beautiful evening. Okay, folks, catch you later.